Hello everyone, welcome back to Trains on Tuesday. First of all this week I want to say thank you very much to everyone that struggled with my uh, my last two videos there, the display cases. Um, congratulations to those of you that made it all the way through those two very long videos. Um, some great comments, thank you. And arising out of the comments were a couple of requests, so we're going to deal with those today. Um, but today's video mainly is going to be about what's new. We're going to open that one. And a few other things. That, uh, that are new to the layout. Um, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll leave it at that for now and uh, and um, get right into into things. Coffee this morning, by the way, courtesy of Sparky one hundred seven one hundred seven. Good morning, Sparky. Good coffee. So, uh, first of all, uh, Dave from Dave's Trains, one of my very long time uh, uh, subscribers, said he wouldn't mind a look inside the Lionel maintenance, uh, maintenance and lubrication kit, or lubrication and maintenance kit. So, let's get that opened up and take a look. It's got a pretty good snap on there. There we go. Lots of grease on the on the lid of the box there a tin of Lionel cleaner for model trains now this is so old there is absolutely no warning labels on it no information as to what's in it or was in it it's empty in addition to that we got a couple of gigantic uh, toothpicks a brush no idea what that is Some genuine, yeah, I'm not going to read that, are we? The blue bit there says Lionel. Lionel oil for model trains. Some emery boards or sanding sticks, whatever you want to call them. And here, a rather dirty old cloth in there, and some Lionel. That's what it says on there, Lionel, lubricant for model trains. So there we go, Dave. There's a look inside that box. And it says on there that this is Lionel number nine. Oh, where's the focus? That's the trouble with this camera. Anyway, it says Lionel number 927 lubricating and maintenance kit made by the Lionel Corporation, New York, New York. Now the other request came from Tim Smith and Tim is a recent subscriber and he asked to see some of the trains, trying Hornby trains in case number six operating alongside one of my CN trains for comparison. So I have set up on the track my V2, that's a Backman, that came out of case nine, and some mineral wagons. A nice long rake of mineral wagons from uh, case number six. So a little later we're going to run those along along with the CN uh, coal train. Now for what's new, I called in my hobby shop this week. I only wanted, I think, two two little tins of paint. I came out of there with about eight tins of paint and a Lima Northeastern twenty ton brake van paid five dollars for that 
Also, there was this, which really thrilled me. Trying put out a lot of these well cars, as they're called. Um, I have a brown one, a blue one, a green one, and a grey one. And for just two dollars, focus, two dollars, I've got an orange one. Now according to the catalogues that uh, Oscar Paisley kindly sent me, that dates back to 1956, I think. Also, I found, move that one out of the way, I found in there a trying green, southern green, short coach. Also, a blood and custard Mark I restaurant car. And that was only ten dollars. This one was only five. So I snapped those up really quickly. There was one more car in there. It was uh, it was um, one of these. One more wagon, a green one with NATO on the side of it. And the only reason I didn't pick that up is because the middle axle was missing. But uh, since I've been home, I'm thinking that the middle axle missing is probably not that big of a deal. Who's going to see? So if it's still there when I next visit the hobby shop, I think that one will be coming home with me. Anyway, this or well, these coaches got me thinking. I thought this green one was a southern version of this. Now I've lined those up, I've got four of them here, lined up at that end, but at this end, this one's about six and three eighths, uh, six and seven eighths, about eight and seven eighths, and ten and three quarters I think. For that one so that's uh, the progression of <laughs> of uh, trying coaches from 1955 56 58 and I think this one around 61 62 uh, this is about full scale the others are under scale now get that one out of the way that one and that one are ones I already had. So the new ones to me here are the restaurant car and the uh, and the Southern. So um, I've got the Southern now that I can I can run with a loco. I'm not quite sure which loco. Probably my M7. But when I picked this up, I thought there's something different about that one. I've got one of these. I had it brand new. About 1960, 61. Had it brand new. Anyway, I got this home and uh, stripped it down. Gave it a little wash. Got quite a bit of dirt off it. And it really is in nice shape. Really is good. But when I got comparing it to my other one. Well, let's have a look and see. Okay, so here they are. This is the new one. It still has the original trying bogies on it and here's the other one now this one I did put the uh, the Backman Mark 1 bogies on but there's another difference my original had brown curtains and the new one has blue curtains I've yet to really pinpoint that down in the catalogs as to uh, as to the difference when they introduce the uh, the two different colors anyway we are perhaps going to run a train of eight 
trying Mark 1s with two restaurant cars. Okay, let's get to the unboxing. You know how it goes sometimes on a lazy afternoon, nothing much going on. You sit and click on your hobby shop, see if there's anything going on. Well, I did that with Britannia Models a little while ago. And lo and behold, they had the double O scale some one containers. Now I had tried ordering these from them back in the spring or late winter. And they didn't have them. They said they were on order and then in another communication they said Hornby had informed them that they weren't going to get them. And that was the end of that. But uh, Michael at the uh, Mr. Newbie channel helped me out tremendously and got me those two along with the wagon that they go on but anyway when I clicked on the website a little while ago lo and behold there's one containers so I called them up and I said yeah I think I'll take two packs of those he said yeah that's the last two packs then they're all gone so I ordered those and while we were sitting chatting I'm flipping through a few more things and I ordered something else and I ordered something else and that's what we got in the box here at least I hope so I haven't looked at it yet I've just opened it but... anyway before we go to that comparison this is often asked and um, often answered too. But what's the difference between HO and double O? Well there's two containers. They're different sizes, they're different heights, certainly different length. Both are 40 foot containers. Both 40 feet long in double O scale which is larger and HO scale. Now, <laughs> when it compare, comes to comparing British, British trains to in double O scale to North American trains in HO scale, it gets confusing because they look about the same size-wise. But you've got double O in a larger scale and smaller. The British prototypes are smaller. So by the time you scale that to double O and then you scale the HO which are bigger down to a smaller scale they end up looking about the same but in reality the British trains are much smaller than the North American trains anyway into the box I have not looked in here yet so I do not know what is in here exactly don't know what it looks like paperwork my indebtedness Okay, first item out, ratio trackside concrete hut, two concrete huts in there. These concrete huts lined the, uh, the tracks in England back when I was a child. They were pretty much abandoned by then, often overgrown, no windows in them, and uh, they were great train spotting locations. We used to sneak off into them and sit in there for a while, watching the trains go by. So there's my two packs of one containers. I still only have one wagon to run these on, but, but now I've got six containers all together. There we go. Lovely. 
And the other thing that I couldn't resist. An A22. Number 60523 Suncastle. That's a model of a locomotive that I did see running in service um, on British Railways back in the late 50s, early 60s. So we'll get that out of the out of the box, and we'll uh, we'll see if that wants to pull the trying coaches, eight trying coaches around the track. Okay, see you soon. Okay, let's get on with the running session.
So once again, uh, Tim, the British stuff is in a larger scale than the North American stuff, the Canadian stuff. So if they were in the same scale, that British loco would be considerably smaller than what you see there. And when it comes to the wagons, well, we've got mineral wagons there, um, probably 16 and 20 ton wagons. That's their capacity. Again, they're in a larger scale than what the Canadian ones are. The Canadian ones, Canadian National, they're 100 ton capacity. 20 ton, 100 ton. Okay, quite literally the very first time applying power to the new A2-2 and eight trying Mark 1 coaches. Let's see what happens. Oh, we got movement. I'm not sure if this engine's going to be able to pull eight coaches up the hill. But we'll find out. On the left my A2 and on the right my V2 Hornby and Backman models. The uh, V2 is an old model, the old split chassis. Anyway, the first couple of times around I do have a little bit of a problem with that uh, A2. I'm going to be taking a closer look at that later. Well, I hope you enjoyed that Trains on Tuesday. Um, next week we will head outside again. Not quite sure why, but that's what we're going to do. Anyway, I always know when the video's over. My coffee cup's empty. Bye for now, everyone. Okay, quite literally the very first time applying power to my new A22. A2 slash 2. Let's see if it's gonna go. Nothing. Not moving. Yeah, we got a derailing problem.